All right, good evening, everybody. Not too sure how well this is going to work. We've got a, about two or three of five bars at this point in time. We may be coming through. We may not be coming through. Tin foil on the receiver for everybody all around. I don't know exactly if it's us or if it's something else going on with the current situation with the Internet as it is, but I'm just not getting an interesting, goodly signal here, which is very strange at this point in time. So we'll have to take a look and see if that continues into the evening hours. If that is, in fact, the case, I apologize in advance for that. And again, we'll do our best to make sure that everybody has everything they need to get the forecast in here for tonight. For apologies again for last night. was not able to get things going, but as of right now, we again, we've got some uh, pretty good signal for the time being, so definitely good news, at least for where we see this going on. For everybody just joining us on Facebook, it looks like the Internet signal is doing okay for the time being, so good news on that. And again, if everybody's tuning in and ready to go, we should be able to get this done pretty easily. It is Thursday night, uh, just about 20 until 9 o'clock as the clock you see up on the red bar of the phone above my, floating nicely above my head up there, tells us at this time, it's time for another edition of Weather Overtime. Apologies for not being on last night, some, uh, interest, some difficult news from Kansas. My mom had a bit of an accident. She is uh, out of the hospital right now. She's doing fine. She is working her way back toward uh, some a little bit of some ice on the kneecaps. Didn't work. Was, forgot to carry her loads out separately and did a pretty good job of banging up her knees on that. Yes, she is fine. Thanks everybody for the very nice uh, care notes that you have sent. Appreciate that. If you are in again watching what's going on in the mid south area, can't stick around for all of it. Forecast information available here. Social media here, there, and. Over over there on that screen. Got a pretty good idea as to what's going on. Feel free to share our netcast around and let us know a little bit more about what you're thinking and seeing and saying out there. We would love to have more about what's going on out there for tonight. Currently, again, in the Mid-South area, things are quiet. We could see some fog out there. The leftover showers are gone from this evening, but I would not be surprised to see some fog in and around the area. Nothing showing up yet on a pretty much almost deserted Germantown Parkway for tonight. So again, I'm not seeing too much of any visibility visibility problems here now, but into tomorrow morning, that could definitely be something to take a look at. So it may want to allow for a little bit of extra time to get to where you're going in the morning hours. A little bit more haze, a little bit more fog showing up on the City Hall cam in Germantown. And again, a little bit more here, but not seeing a lot across the entire Mid-South area. On the radar, again, not that much to show you at this time. We did not have too much of anything in the way of rain after the showers left late last night into very early this morning. Some beautiful conditions out there. Nice to be able to see the sunrise once again as the remnants of Irma peel their way back off to the east of us. So not that much, again, left for the Mid-South at this time either. As of right now, again, pretty quiet across much of the area. We don't have much going on. We do have a couple of tropical storm uh, watches in effect off into around the area of the Atlantic. So for as of right now, if you're heading down toward Florida and the Carolinas, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. The main thing for right now with Jose, no longer a hurricane, now a tropical storm. This thing could be sending a lot of heavy surf from Miami to Chesapeake Bay into the next couple of days, and that's going to be a bit of a problem at this point in time. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, thank you very much. Yes, she is uh, recuperating and doing much nicer at this time. Likewise, Brett Smith, thank you very much. Marsha Couples, uh, thank you very much for joining us from West Memphis. Walter Newson, thanks for joining us. And yes, as you spotted and well spotted there, winter storm watches and winter weather advisories in effect for central Montana, Wyoming, and a small part of Idaho for tonight. Yes, that is not our area. No, I don't mind showing it because it shows signs of winter being on the way. It's almost here. We've got about a week or so until we actually hit the change in seasons up until about autumn. And if you've ever traveled in this area, you know that about anything past about Labor Day, all bets are off for traveling. So something to think about if you're heading out that direction. Currently into the west, we're looking again at a lot of smoke plumes uh, visible on the satellite picture. And information again from 
uh, Satellite Service Environmental Center from the University of Wisconsin showing a lot of those smoke plumes. Let's get some labels in there so we can see where we are. Uh, a lot of smoke plumes, the heaviest in Montana, the Dakotas, into southern parts of Canada and into around the Great Lakes. That is mainly moving across and away from our area. A few more smoke plumes into the west around Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. And some of those smoke plumes heading up, being blown and directed well away from us into and around the area. Uh, the rest of the upper Midwest, for the most part, not that much going on where we are. Randy McDonald, welcome from Middleton, Tennessee for tonight. Bozo Wolfo, glad you had a good day in Senatobia. Thanks for stopping on by. Nathan Stroop, uh, let's not go too far too fast. Good sentiment, but we're not quite there yet. And Nancy Barnett Cleveland from Senatobia, not looking forward to winter. Uh, Carol Williams Graham, thank you very much for joining us from the Fox Meadows area. Uh, keeping a track of the fire situation, again, numerous fires are being reported. We also have uh, new incidents coming our way. We've got half a dozen new fires across the Intermountain West, three of which in Northern California, one in Nevada, one in southwestern Utah, and another one in southwestern South Dakota. Those are just the new fires that were reported from today within about the last 24 hours or so and in several hundred acres under fire at this point in time. Uh, three fires contained, three large fires contained, uncontained large fires, 41 of them. So that gives you an idea as to what the National Interagency Fire Center and the Forest Service are dealing with. This is a general overlook as to what's going on out there when it comes to fires across the West, across about maybe 10 to 15 percent of the United States getting some very heavy amounts of fires out there. A friend of my wife's was planning a trip out to around Glacier National Park and apparently that is not doing too well with air quality and otherwise out that general direction. So if you're planning on traveling west, uh, this is going to be again uh, something to think about. Uh, Walter Newsom, how normal are these fires and how many do we normally get? It's an above normal season. I do know that much, but I don't have the details specifically on how many uh, over and above this year is all about. If you'd like to know more, you can go to the United States Forest Service through the United States Department of Agriculture. You can also get more information from the National Interagency Fire Center, and this is a very good place well, I did not want the sit, uh, sit rep, but let's go ahead and give you, to, hopefully that website comes up. There we go, National Interagency Fire Center, and that's available at nifc.gov to find out more about what's going on out there. They even have their own YouTube channel, which is pretty cool to take a look at out there to see a little bit more about what goes on, how you can get in contact with them, all the data available. It's all available through nifc.gov. Uh, to find out some more on there. Donna Kelsey Faulkner, yeah, some downpours would be good. Uh, fortunately, when the uh, seasons switch, that's usually when we start getting the snows in the higher elevations, and that's going to help to put a kibosh on some of these fires, and that's a good thing, too, because with the showing up of snow in the lower elevations, that may do a very good job of helping out some of the firefighters out there, but it's been a long, hard slog for this fire season out in that area. Again, nifc.gov for more information on that. All right, news that everybody's talking about, the tropics. We'll get to Jose coming up here in just a little bit. Way out into the Atlantic, we have two impulses moving off the coast of Africa. One is about in mid-ocean between South America and Africa. This one expected to develop into something within the course of the next couple of days. The two to five day forecast has a 80% chance of this developing into something. This could be our L storm, which would be Lee, L double E. Uh, again, we have already had Katya in the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, everybody remembers the I storm from a couple of days ago. Uh, the next one, just off the Sahel, uh, that's the portion of West Africa where these storms usually develop. This one also has a high chance of forming a 90% possibility of developing into something within the course of about the next two to five days. So these two are definitely something to keep an eye out for, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here at News Channel 3. Now for Jose, looking again at those storms, mainly taking, sadly, almost an exact track to what Irma did a few days ago. Uh, that was one of the biggest storms that we have ever had in the Atlantic, so this is going to be something we really need to watch. Jose continues. It is now a tropical storm. 
It was a hurricane and was puttering along for several days as a hurricane, but now it is just a tropical storm and not that much left of it. It still continues its meandering way, although it looks like it is going to become a hurricane once again as we get into the next couple of days. So we may see this become a hurricane by tomorrow afternoon. Bit of warm water over the Gulf Stream, and that could be just a bit of a problem out there. So we could be seeing some more problems with that as we get into the course of the next couple of days. That, again, could be something for us uh, to watch out for into the next uh, day or two, especially if you're going toward the East Coast states. The National Hurricane Center is asking everyone, and apologies for the signal slacking off on Facebook. I'm not too sure why that's causing it. We're sitting almost right on top of the receiver at this point. Uh, as of right now, again, the, the storm is going to be coming fairly close. It could go anywhere within this hatched area, and some of that takes it very close to Chesapeake Bay and the Delmarva Peninsula. So this could still be a problem for travelers, especially anybody heading to D.C., Baltimore, Philly or New York over the next several days. I would watch this very carefully. Either way, it does not look to be an Irma type situation or a Harvey situation. It's just a wandering storm, but as it gets close enough, the motion in the atmosphere is going to cause a lot of heavy surf. So if you're planning a beach trip from, say, Miami to up around the Delmarva Peninsula, I would watch this very carefully to see if this storm could be causing some more problems for you. And then likewise, we're going to be keeping an eye on those other two storms a little farther away from us. All right, here in the Mid-South, good news, not that much going on. The seven-day hazardous weather outlook is looking very quiet for right now. No problems being seen whatsoever in the Mid-South. And as of right now, could be, again, the possibility of some rain in our forecast, but not really looking at a lot of activity out there. Uh, as of right now, the good news at this time, well, the good news is I need to update my flash player, I guess. Uh, as of right now, what we did have in the way of thunderstorms taking place uh, toward next week are going to be fairly minimal. And, okay, this is not going to be working too well, so we will just advance everything. Let's see if we can get all that done. There we go. Okay, now things are a little bit better. We've got a new cold front arriving as we go into the weekend. This is going to be dropping into the Midwest by about early Saturday afternoon and evening, and then into the Mid-South area by early next week. The weekend itself looks pretty good, but our next best chance of anything involving cooler weather is still several days away. High pressure and control after what was left of Irma scooted away from us, and that's going to be, again, escorting in a decent amount of very warm air into the next couple of days, so not looking at anything good uh, at this point in time. Walter Newsom, yeah, sorry about the signal dropout. It happens. I don't know why. And unfortunately, we get that a lot from here, even though the uh, signal receiver uh, that I'm using is about three feet away from my phone. So I'm not too sure why this all happens. All right. Definitely not an internet technician like my son is. I got to get him in here on a uh, consultancy basis at some point. All right. For tonight, low temperatures, quite pleasant going back into the lower to mid 60s, upper 60s around the metro area. High temperatures into tomorrow, pleasant, but much warmer than what they have been, mid to upper 80s. Low temperatures into tomorrow night, back into the mid to upper 60s. Now, as we head toward uh, Friday night football tomorrow night, Definitely not like what it was last week. We're going to be seeing much cooler temperatures than a lot of other areas south of us. But in the meantime, we'll be looking for temperatures to be very mild. So around kickoff time, temperatures will be in the high 70s to lower 80s. So definitely want to make certain you plan ahead for that. Saturday looks great. Temperatures, if I can get the high temperatures to show up here someplace, thank you very much. Pushing 90 in the metro area. Low temperatures Saturday night back to the upper 60s to the lower 70s. No chance of rainfall seen here. And high temperatures on Sunday, again, very close to 90 degrees. And that, again, is going to be something that we take a look at uh, for, again, the possibility of more areas of very warm conditions. Now, getting into uh, Sunday night, low temperatures, again, going back into the mid to upper 60s. And chances of rain still not seen in the area. But as we get into Monday, we'll be looking for more chances of rain getting a little bit closer to us toward northeast Arkansas. And highs on Monday, once again, right around 90 degrees. That's not unheard of at this point in time. Uh, that's something, again, that we're going to be noticing uh, for, again, this time of the year. It could very easily, we could easily be in the upper 90s, 
Not going to be happening this time around, but it is still going to be very toasty out there right on in through the rest of the week. Lows Monday night in the upper 60s to right around the lower 70s, and chances of rain not showing up a lot until the afternoon. And most of that should be in northeast Arkansas toward Tuesday afternoon with highs on Tuesday once again around 90 at this point in time. Uh, Donna Kelsey Faulkner, yeah, my son's at uh, East Tennessee State University studying up on a uh, computer science and business degree combo, so he'll be uh, doing that for a little while. He's a sophomore this year, so wish him luck on that. All right, this is something that was uh, enough weather for right now. If you've ever wanted to know a little bit more about what you can do to help out when it comes to severe weather, this is your chance. If you've never taken one of these classes before, now is the time to get updated on this. The National Weather Service in Memphis has reissued their new uh, class period schedule for the fall 2017 uh, semester. So if you live in and around the Mid-South, these are the classes that you want to try to attend in the course of the next couple of days. Uh, this will be your opportunity to see more about this. The first one will be held on the 26th of September, 6.30 p.m. at Lafayette County Fire Department Central Station, uh, 50 County Road 132, 1032 in Oxford, Mississippi. Two days after that, Quitman County Marks Community House, 200 Pecan or Pecan Street, depending on how you pronounce that. I'm from Kansas, so, you know, a little different. Marks, Mississippi, uh, and then all through October and into early November, there's going to be tons of them coming up all the way throughout the Mid-South area. Uh, nothing specifically showing up at this time uh, for Memphis or the Memphis metro area. Usually that's held in the springtime. But if you'd like to contact the National Weather Service and have them do a specific training uh, event for your business, your place of worship, things like that. They are available for stuff like that. Best way to get to where they are is go to the National Weather Service webpage. That's at weather.gov slash M-E-G. Uh, if you've never been there before, great place to go to where it comes to weather information. And then all you have to do is just uh, scroll upwards a little bit to the top of the page. Click on the Become a Storm Spotter uh, headline at the top of the page right there. Click that and that'll take you directly to uh, that page which has all the training information on it and or scroll down to the bottom of the page and you've got the email address sr-meg dot wx at noaa.gov. You can find it very easily or if you're missing it email me and I'll help let you know about a little bit more about what's going on there. All right, switching from weather to science, tomorrow morning is it. In just under 12 hours, the Cassini space probe, which was launched over a decade ago and was expecting to uh, last only about four years, has now lasted well past a decade. And tomorrow morning at about seven o'clock our time, the Cassini space probe will be crashing into the planet Saturn. That was planned from the beginning. It's not an accident. There's no conspiracy theory or anything like that going on. Uh, Cassini will be crashing into Saturn to avoid contaminating any of the moons out there like Titan or Enceladus or Iapetus. Uh, again, that's to make certain that any future visitors from planet Earth don't show up and find an ecological catastrophe. Even though the spacecraft has been in orbit for 10 years, and even though it was assembled in a clean room with very minimal germs, there's still the very slight chance that a uh, piece of germs or a tiny little crevice of germs has survived on the spacecraft, and we don't want that thing uh, crashing into a moon and causing a big biological disaster that we as humans have caused. So this is it for Cassini, and if you haven't seen uh, even a sliver of what this spacecraft has given us when it comes to techno technologically uh, incredible feats, the photography it's brought back from Saturn, the data that it's provided over the last few years, uh, the Huygens probe that dropped down toward Titan, all of this stuff, the mission comes to an end in grand fashion tomorrow morning at about 7 o'clock when the probe inter intercepts uh, Saturn's atmosphere and is dragged down by all those gases. It's not designed to fly in an atmosphere, so it's going to come to a crash. The last signal from Cassini will be felt or be detected somewhere on around 8 o'clock or afterwards tomorrow. So again, we'll be waiting for that. Very sad time, but a great opportunity to learn more. And this is why science is important uh, to begin to take a look at something uh, like that. 
to see again more importance about more probes that we can make and study our solar system. More on that, all you have to do is go to my Facebook page. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, you know all about that for right now, including my uh, pet peeve of people especially those who are not trained storm chasers or meteorologists standing out in hurricanes trying to get uh, weather information and pretty much risking their lives for no reason whatsoever. I'll get off my soapbox for right now, but again, it'll give you an idea as to what we're looking at here. More details on the weather forecast. Uh, the Tigers have rescheduled their game with University of Central Florida. Thank you, uh, News Channel 3's Glenn Carver, for that. If you can volunteer for our Team Read program, we'd love to have you along for the ride. If you can't do it, please forward the information so we can get more people uh, signed up for stuff like that. And tons of information about Cassini and everything that's going to be going on into the near future as to what's going on. Great look at some oopsie space rocket blooper reel from SpaceX. Good opportunity to learn a little bit more about mistakes and how to fail often, but to fail better next time. Uh, that's all available there uh, as well to find out more details about that. Also available again on my Twitter page and also available again on my Facebook page as well. Happy birthday to my son. Uh, he just turned 20 years old yesterday, so a very happy birthday to him, uh, celebrating back at East Tennessee State University. Hard to believe it's been 20 years, but a uh, very happy birthday to him. If you'd like to know more about what's going on with the forecast, all you have to do is go to wreg.com uh, slash weather to find out more information about what's going on here. And I'd be glad to give you more details as to uh, what's happening in the Mid-South uh, where it comes to the to the current conditions out there. Not much in the way of showers or thunderstorms, as you can see, but we do have, again, the possibility of some activity uh, in the near future. Uh, let's see, who was asking the question here uh, just a little while ago? Somebody was asking about uh, winter activities here. Let me see if I can scroll back and uh, get that. Uh, Randy McDonald, any idea how our winter will be? Thank you very much. Uh, for asking that question. Here's where you want to go to uh, for more information on that. This is the Climate Prediction Center from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is a great place to go to uh, for more information about what to look for when it comes to, again, the possibility of everything going on into the near or far future. If I can get this to work properly, it would really help. So excuse me for one second here. And we'll get that done. That's at cpc.ncep.noaa.gov, but I'll post that later on. Uh, winter, let's just go for the next three months or so and show you the temperatures are expected to be in a little bit above normal as we go into and around the next three months. This is for September, October, and November. The three-month outlook showing, again, an above-average possibility of getting uh, some temperatures a little bit on the warmer side. Now let's switch to uh, precipitation, which again you can see also shows us getting an above average amount of precipitation going on into the Mid-South area. So according to the computer models, heading into winter, it looks like it is going to be a little bit wetter and a little bit warmer than on average. Now that does not guarantee that we're not going to have tons of sunshine out there or again anything in the way of uh, totally cold temperatures, but as of right now that's the best we can do for about a three month period. Uh, again, for the next three to four months or so, all this information will change. And if you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to the Climate Prediction Center uh, for more information as to what's going on. Great place to go to. And this is also one of my pet peeves here that if you've ever seen anybody asking me about uh, the Farmer's Almanac, which one of them, either the Farmer's Almanac, the Old Farmer's Almanac, Ye old Farmer's Almanac, the Farmer's Farmer's Almanac, whatever it is, uh, don't really put much stock in that, mainly because they don't do anything to show about how they actually get the forecast information. Also, they're very, very, very generic. If you've ever seen their predictions, uh, show me if they, you, they do a forecast for, say, a blizzard in Michigan in November. That's not exactly, you know, calling it out of thin air for right there and verifying that. That stands a pretty good chance of happening. Now, when and or if they ever call a blizzard in Louisiana in, let's say, July, and that verifies, then I will sit up and take notice. But in the meantime, uh, probably will not be doing 
uh, too much of anything for that until then to put much stock in those forecasts. So CPC is one of the best places you can go to for more information on that. Join me for a complete forecast update bright and early tomorrow morning on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. We'll get you more details as to what's going on uh, in regards to Mid-South and going into the weekend. If you can't listen on the air, go join us at www talkbacklivenetwork.org and you can get more of my weather information throughout the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 and be glad to have you along for the ride there. We'll have more details coming up a little bit later on News Channel 3 so stay tuned for more on that with Jim Jaggers on News Channel 3 at 10 and I'll have more tomorrow morning on of course AM 730 and more on my weather overtime page as well. Thanks for joining us tonight apologies for the uh, slowdowns in computer time out there. So hopefully everybody was able to survive that fairly well and more details on your complete forecast with news channel three on air and online thanks for joining us